down to the battery and castle garden. Eighty years had fled since its maiden trip. of the city now pounded through newer arteries below the surface of the streets. Of four original lines, the Third Avenue elevated continued in token service. The deserted stations felt the chill breath of late autumn, where occasional flowered ornaments remained. it seemed, a hundred years before spaceships and Earth satellites, when plans for rapid transit were a science fiction. of the last century, there were many proposals for elevated systems. They reflected the graceful, leisurely life then enjoyed in the Hudson Valley, when rich New Yorkers vacationed in bucolic Brooklyn, as they might today in Bermuda. and comfortably, and the lamplighters signaling their clothes gave promise of unhurried tomorrows. But what is the promise of a port city? Shipping and industry, trade and traffic. <laughs> of traffic had seen fulfillment, few of the 60-odd proposals embroidered over the years had kept pace. One, a pneumatic tube tunneling lower Broadway, actually was completed, but its term of service was brief. In failure, however, its potential was realized when it was leased as a wine cellar. The most elaborate scheme was a circular promenade. The ladies' lounge, men's smoker, and little cars were drawn upon a conveyor belt at a top speed of 10 miles an hour. By 1867, construction of the first elevated was underway on quiet Greenwich Street. And upon completion, Charles T. Harvey, the pioneer of rapid transit, was formally invited to test his invention. But the tycoons took over where the inventor had left off. Track was added, steam locomotives introduced, and luxurious cars made ready for the inaugural run. Yesterday's dream of science fiction 
was now close enough to touch. <laughs> event of rapid transit was welcomed by many. Others took a somewhat jaundiced view. Their dire prophecies of fire and destruction had a certain basis in truth. holiday season in the life of the elf, and people like children at recess flocked to these miniature spas. At the tip of Manhattan, the elevated opened under the pleasant prospects of the battery and Castle Garden. It ran past Coenty's Slip, where the clipper ships docked, past Bowery and Canal in the heart of the theater district. It wound through the financial district wrapped in its cocoon of wires, past the Brooklyn Bridge newly flung across the East River. Picking up commuters, it continued past the many bars that lined Third Avenue. By night, the L rushed pleasure seekers to downtown restaurants, theaters, and masquerade balls. Well into the 20th century, it nourished the carnival spirit of the Bowery. <laughs> 